When you're assembling an engine and you're trying to make sure everything is right, one of the things that you need to check is the uh, piston ring end gap. Now you want to check this end gap uh, after the final machine work has been done on the bores, but before the final cleanup has been done. And the reason for that is because uh, as you're installing the rings, checking the end gap, pulling them back out, you're going to get the bores a little bit dirty. So it just makes sense to do, make sure the bores are clean, check the ring gap, then re-clean everything before final assembly. Now, these particular rings are rings that are designed to be file fit uh, to the bore. In other words, they do not come with the preset ring end gap. We are going to install these rings in the bore like this, measure the ring end gap, and then file the ring edge until we get to the gap that we want. In this case, this engine and these particular rings, the final ring end gap on this top ring should be 20 thousandths of an inch. So, first thing I'll do is take the ring and lubricate it. Put a little bit of oil on the end that I'm going to file. I don't like to file on a dry ring because the lack of lubrication tends to leave pretty big grooves in the ring end uh, after you filed it. So once that ring end has been lubricated like that, then we'll walk the ring over and set it up in the ring filer. So this is a ring filer and it's just a grinding stone that I can rotate, it's pretty rough, and set the ring against it, rotate the grinding stone, and trim some metal off the edge of this ring. You can use a standard file, but that's really time consuming, and it's very difficult to get a nice true edge to the ring. One of the things we want to watch as we file is to close the ring up and make sure that the two edges are still budding and that they're true to each other. Now, I only take metal off of one edge. That way I can make sure that I've always got a good machined surface that I can check this angle on. So we'll chuck that up in there. And you'll notice as I'm rotating this, I'm actually rotating it so that the stone is moving towards the inside of the ring. You always want to file your ring from outside edge to inside edge. So we'll take a little metal off. I'll wipe that off. And then I'm going to take a whetstone. And I'm going to use the whetstone to knock the burr off the edge here. You want to deburr all these edges especially the face of the ring edge before I install it in the bore. A light deburring with this whetstone is really all you need. As you're moving your fingers across the edge of that ring, you should not feel any sharp metal, any catches or anything like that. So now that I've taken some metal off that guy, we'll walk back over here and install it in the cylinder bore that we're matching the gap to. So I'll take the ring, I'd set it in place like this, so it's about 90 degrees to the bore, and then I twist the ring down into place like that. Make sure that the ring is maybe a quarter of an inch, a half an inch away from the cylinder top, I'm going to use this piston that has a ring in the uh, oil ring slot to set the depth on this ring that I'm gapping about an inch down in the bore. And by using the piston in this ring, I can also make sure that the ring 
that's in the bore is true. It's even all the way around in its depth from the deck surface. I'm going to take a feeler gauge and I'm just going to try to set the feeler gauge in that gap. I can't get this feeler gauge to set in that gap so I'm going to need to take this ring back over, file some more metal off of it, and I'll continue that process of filing and then deburring and checking until I get this to the appropriate end gap. Over here in this cylinder I've got a ring that's already been gapped. It's in good shape. It's ready to go. I set the feeler gauge into the end gap and sliding through there I should feel a real light resistance as the feeler gauge is going past the ring. That resistance tells me that I'm pretty much exactly where I need to be on that gap. I'm not too big, I'm not too small, and the ring is gapped properly. So we'll repeat that process with all of the top rings and all of the second rings for this engine and get everything set where we want it. The ring end gap check is very important. You do need to make sure that you're doing that and that it is set because without enough ring end gap, the rings can butt against each other while the engine is running every, after everything has come to temperature. And if those rings butt to each other, you got real problems. So there you go. A tedious, very mind-numbingly boring, but very important part of engine assembly.